Well, hey there, it's Liz Rohr from Real World MP, and you're watching MP Practice Made Simple, the weekly videos to help save you time, frustration, and help you learn faster so you can take the best care of your patients. So if you ever get uh, uneasy when you have patients come in with a head injury of some kind, they're worried they have a concussion, you're wondering how to diagnose them, what you should look for, what imaging you need to do, and the follow-up care, I got you. This is what it's all about. Before we jump in, I'm, I've gotten some feedback from nurse practitioners that it's hard to keep up with the videos because there's so much to them that I've made so far and maybe this is just the nature of NP life and it is what it is but if you find that this is you I really want to make sure that I make these videos for you so I really want to make sure that you can actually fully enjoy them and so if you feel like it's just too much you want them to be short and sweet more to the point just give me the information there it goes um, leave a comment below with short and sweet and I can kind of work on abbreviating these to be as you know as quick and easy as possible versus do you want to comment below keep it the same if you like this kind of like built out case study type of model um, definitely leave me a comment I'd love to hear from you again because these are made for you jumping into concussions though so the thing that you're thinking about with concussions it's really defined as a trauma-induced altered change in mental altered mental status uh, with or without loss of consciousness I believe is how the American Academy of Neurology defines it. So it's a little bit vague is, is the moral of the story, what I'm trying to say here. And what you're looking for when you have somebody who comes in, you're worried about a concussion, you just wanna make sure that you're doing, step one is triage. So are they at risk for um, an alarm sign? An alarm sign would be something like um, structural damage in your brain, skull fractures, brain bleeding, brain swelling, or spinal cord injury. So those are the things you're kind of assessing for, making sure it's not that. And then when you're left, oh, when it's left over with that, uh, you're kind of left with concussion and it has a constellation of symptoms that go along with it, right? So the symptoms that you're gonna get with a concussion are things like headache, uh, possible loss of consciousness at the time, um, cognitive fog, uh, nausea, photophobia, phonophobia, um, amnesia, like before the, the accident or after it. Those are kind of the constellation of symptoms. Things you're not going to see in a concussion are any neurologic, focal neurologic deficits. So uh, limb weakness, numbness, hemiplegia, vision loss, visual uh, changes, and then yeah, other stroke-like symptoms or any other focal neurologic deficits. Those are really concerning for brain-specific injury. So you wanna have them be seen in the ER uh, for some imaging. There's some physical exam findings that you also wanna watch out for. So you wanna look specifically as doing, again, like you're looking for focal neurologic deficits, you're doing a full neurologic exam. So not like grossly intact, like they're walking and talking fine. No, I'm talking two to 12, uh, the full thing finger to nose testing, the rapid alternating movements one, uh, Romberg testing, shin, heel to, heel to shin, that kind of thing. So that doing that full, that full one, seeing if they have any focal neurologic signs. And then the specific ones to head injury that are uncommon in primary care, and typically they would be going self-triaging to the ER, hopefully, um, are things like signs of bleeding, signs of skull, skull fracture. So you can have those like raccoon eyes where it's basically like blood all in this whole area. Um, you can have bleeding behind your ear, um, the battle sign. You can have hematotympanum. I'm probably not saying that right, but the blood behind the TMs. And you can also have signs of like a CSF leak. So like if they have any kind of like that clear fluid coming out of their nose, that kind of thing. So those are all the alarm signs that you want to watch out for. So those are kind of like the easier, kind of like more obvious ones. They're not obvious, but they're easier ones to send out. So you're kind of left with the people who don't have that. And so further from there, you kind of need to decide, do they have risk factors of developing into that if they don't have those more like clear clinical signs. And so that brings me to some tools. So I super love tools, as you probably know, they make life a lot easier. So there's two different tools that, I, it's categories of tools that I'm talking about. So below this video is going to be a cheat sheet for um, uh, a lot of this summary of this information, including the uh, links to these uh, checklist tools and so the first one has to do with assessing their symptoms and so like I said there's a constellation of symptoms that patients will have that go along with this diagnosis these can happen at the time of the injury or can progress over the course of hours to days and so you're going to assess their symptoms with this checklist and going from there you're going to kind of decide how severe this concussion is and that's also the thing you're going to use to monitor their symptoms. So that's the kind of like the first category of tool. The second category of tool are, are three different ones that can help you make the decision about whether or not somebody needs imaging. So one of them is the Canadian head CT rules, which is the one I most commonly see and that I ascribe to the most. There's also the New Orleans, New, New Orleans criteria, New Orleans criteria, and the uh, Nexus 2. 
And it basically just, it's a checklist for, and you can kind of combine all of them, which is going to be in the cheat sheet, um, to kind of use your judgment with that. Um, the caveat I want to I want to make here is that any tool or assessment that you're doing, especially if you're on the fence and it's not clear cut and dry either way, of like oh this person definitely doesn't need imaging or oh they really need to go to the ER, I would recommend discussing that with your supervisor and just letting them know that like hey here's my assessment I'm using the Canadian Head CT rules here's my kind of gut feeling of like, I really want to go send them to the ER still for some imaging, things like that. Um, discussing that with your supervisor again, because there's different rules depending on what criteria you're using. And uh, so it talks, and, and what it talks about both before you download the checklist or if you've downloaded it all, already, is it's talking about mechanism of injury, age, past medical history, like are they on blood thinners? Like was it how severe of like an injury it was? Or are they intoxicated right now? Were they intoxicated at the time? Things like that. That all kind of changes your judgment about whether or not they need imaging. And to save some time, I'm not going through all of them, but I do recommend taking a look at that cheat sheet to kind of just literally going through the points and applying each of those and helping you decide if they need imaging. And I really do recommend that you um, send them to the ER for imaging if they're having a head injury at the time. There are nuances, of course, which again, you should discuss with your supervisor, but typically if you need imaging right now, and you're doing stat and you're expediting things, like typically that needs to be done in the ER, right? Because if you get an abnormal result, what are you gonna do with it, right? So they probably need observation and higher level of care and things like that. So so yeah, so just to recap, you're kind of looking for the uh, alarm signs, sending them out, assessing them um, based on their history of the, you wanna ask things like, and this comes with all the tools, right? But you're assessing things like, did they lose consciousness at the time of the injury? Was it witnessed or was it unwitnessed? And um, what are the symptoms that they're having now? Um, again, are they having the classic concussion symptoms? Are they having any of those um, neurologic symptoms, the vision changes, stuff like that? And then following up with them, if you've did safely determined, and, and based on your physical exam too, right? And so if you've safely determined that they have a concussion, um, the interventions are basically just rest. So what you're looking for is physical and mental rest. So even things like looking at a screen, watching TV on your phone, on the computer, um, reading a book, all those things, anything that's mentally taxing, that's making your symptoms worse, you need to not do, which is a real, a real drag if you have a more serious concussion because you just have to lay around and listen to music basically. That's all you're allowed to do really. And what it is, and then any physical symptoms too, because usually if you have mental, uh, anything mentally taxing is giving you symptoms, physical is just gonna make it worse. So if you can do, you can do those things without any pain, any brain fog or headache or nausea, again, looking at that symptom checklist, if you can do all of those things, then you can kind of progress to the next level. And basically the treatment is for adults, if we're talking about adults that are trying to go back to work, you're kind of just, there's no real strict criteria. It's kind of just until you're feeling better. And so it's at least 24 hours kind of taking it day by day. Usually what I do for patients is have them come in once a week um, if they've had a really bad concussion and every single time assessing their symptoms and how much they're getting better, um, how often, because there's like a rating scale that goes in there too. And then the, and if we're talking about kids, the assessment is typically the same, uh, the same physical assessment, only they have a PCARN rule um, instead of the Canadian head CT rules because we're a little bit more conservative with the kiddos um, in terms of whether or not we're gonna order imaging for them. So typically when I have kids come in, I look at that PCARN um, and I do my full neuro assessment and I'm a little bit more conservative sending them to the ER for observation, even if you don't need the, the CT scan, right? Because you always wanna make sure that you're given really safe care. So that's kind of like a side note about the pediatrics. And then when with their like return to play, if we're talking about like an adolescent, the CDC has a really great website that kind of describes this return to play process. And basically it's at least five days because you need to be at each step of like mental, mentally taxing things, light physical activity, heavier physical activity, things like that, without symptoms for at least 24 hours in each of those steps until they can go back to play. And again, I just have them come back in if you're seeing them in urgent care and they're like, I need this note to clear me, like you just don't, right? You can't clear them, that's not safe. So you have them come back with their PCP. If you're the PCP, you have them come back in a couple of, you have them come back in like five days, right? Because that's the bare minimum. And then, um, you know, every week after that to make sure that they're doing better and better. Um, so that's it, that's all about for con con concussions. Uh, there's more to be said about every topic, right? But that's just one, keeping it short and sweet. Be sure to download that um, cheat sheet down below this video and leave me a comment again, keep it, short and sweet or keep it the same. This is a little bit of a more short and sweet one. It's not that much shorter. I try, I ramble a little bit, but, um, but
But anyway, I'd love to hear from you because I really do want these to be helpful. So important note, it's uh, the holidays are coming up and I celebrate Christmas. So I'm going to be not making a video next week or the week after, but I'll be back with a fresh new video for the first week of the year. So definitely stay tuned for that and uh, hop on the email list because I got some goodies coming up in the next two weeks for my email list only. I will definitely see you in the new year. Got a great couple great videos coming up. Lab interpretation crash course for new nurse practitioners is coming up again, which I'm super, super psyched about. So definitely sign up uh, at realworldnp.com slash labs if you want to hear more about that. I'll be talking about it more when I come back from uh, my little Christmas break. So thank you so much for watching. Hang in there and I'll see you soon.